Hey guys, it's Starlet Flippin' Hippo. Today on Hungry Hippo, we are making one of me and Keith's favorite recipes. It's Cajun chicken fettuccine alfredo, and it's made in the slow cooker. It is so super easy. It is so super delicious. It is also so super fattening. So we don't make it that often. This is a meal that we have maybe once a month, and we try to have it on our cheat days, like on a Friday or a Saturday. Um, it is really super good, um, but yeah, it's not the healthiest of recipes, but I'm still going to show you how I make it. It's really, really easy to make, and you can always replace some of the ingredients that I'm going to show you with other healthier alternatives and make it a more low-calorie, less fattening recipe. So you're going to need a cup of chicken broth. Mine's pre-made there. You're going to need paprika, crushed red peppers, whole oregano, the recipe actually calls for onion powder, but I prefer the minced onion, so I just replace the onion powder with this per the measurements on the cook's thesaurus. You also need garlic and ground red pepper or cayenne pepper. You need regular black pepper. You need salt. One small onion chopped up. This is half of one. I think I've mentioned before, Keith is not that fond of onions, so when a recipe calls for a whole, I use a half. Um, feel free to use the whole onion if you like onion. You need one and a half to two pounds of chicken breasts. They can be frozen, that's fine. They do not have to be thawed out. You need Parmesan cheese. You can either use the grated kind like this or you can get the freshly shredded, whichever you prefer. I usually just use this because I have it around in the cupboards and I don't have to buy anything special. You need heavy whipping cream. This is one thing I know that you can replace with a can of evaporated milk. It won't be as creamy or as rich, but it will be a little healthier. And you can always look up all of these things on the Cook's Thesaurus to see um, if there are healthier alternatives or um, things you can exchange for. The recipe also calls for fettuccine noodles. But those are really wide and thick, and Keith and I are not fans of big fat noodles. So I use the linguine. I think the linguine is a little better. Um, like when we make spaghetti, we use vermicelli. We don't even use like the thin spaghetti noodles. I use vermicelli. So we like really tiny thin noodles and not the big fat ones. But you can use um, deep fettuccine. You can use linguine. You can use angel hair. You can pretty much use any kind of pasta that you enjoy in this recipe and it will work for you. So these three things are um, at the end. So I'm going to show you what you do with this stuff. Then you're going to put it in your fridge overnight, let all the flavors marinate, pull it out in the morning, cook it in your crock pot for six to eight hours on low, and then I'll come back at that point and show you what you're going to do to finish the recipe off. So with the red pepper, or cayenne pepper. You need one fourth of a teaspoon. And you're going to put all your seasonings down here in the bottom first before you do anything else. It calls for um, a half a teaspoon of garlic. I use three fourths, but Keith and I really like garlic. So, oh, this is a new one. So I have paper on there and everything. This will be fun. So here's my half. I'm going to throw in the half. The recipe calls for it. I'm just going to put in an extra one for Some extra fill in there. That's okay. Keith and I love garlic. So the equivalent of the one fourth a teaspoon of onion powder, according to the cook's thesaurus, is a fourth a tablespoon of these. So I'm just going to guesstimate. I'm going to eyeball. You're adding fresh onions too. And then the oregano, you're going to need a half a teaspoon like I said this is a super easy uh, recipe it's just this part with all the spices is a little tedious because there are so many of them that you're adding it calls for a fourth teaspoon of the red pepper flakes I actually double that and add a half a teaspoon because we like spicy things but, you know, just use a fourth if you're not, um, if you don't really like spicy, spicy food. And then you're going to want one and a half teaspoons of the paprika. So here's a half and here's one. You can also, um, if you do like enjoy really spicy food, you can double up on the cayenne pepper too. 
And then your salt, it's one teaspoon. And your pepper is a fourth of a teaspoon. And I do still have to follow the recipe. I don't make this often enough that I've memorized it, especially this part with the spices, because there are so many of them. So once all your spices are in there, you're gonna add your chicken broth. And just kind of mix the broth in with all the spices so everything's good and stirred into the liquid. If they get up on the side, you can try to get them. And then you add your chicken pieces in. And just kind of flip them over. And just make sure, like, the chicken is getting, um, you may have to move them around a little bit to make sure that each piece gets wet, gets that um, chicken broth with the seasoning on it on both sides. When I actually make this without filming, I do it over at the sink and I kind of like roll each piece in and put it back in the bowl and then dump it all in at the end. I'm splashing this everywhere. Never said I was a neat cook. So once you've got all the chicken wet and you've ensured that they've all rolled around in the chicken broth with the seasonings. They can just kind of go in there however. This is all going to get shredded tomorrow and mixed in together anyway and the flavor will go into the chicken as you cook it um, in the crock pot. And then you just take your fresh onions and sprinkle them in on top and that's it. So you can do this in the morning and cook it right away. Like I said, I like to do it at night, let it sit in the fridge, let everything marinate, cook it for six to eight hours, and then I will come back and show you the next step. Hey everyone, it is the next day and my chicken was cooking in this crock pot for six to eight hours on low heat. The next step is to shred your chicken with two forks. You can do it right in the crock pot or you can take your chicken out on a plate and shred it like I do. You can see I have all the rest of the other ingredients that you need at the end. You'll need some parsley, paprika, your two cups of heavy whipping cream, and you need three-fourths a cup of Parmesan, and you can see that I have mine divided. You want a half a cup and a fourth a cup. Now before I got all of this ready, I did put my pot of water on to boil, so that is getting boiling and my noodles are cooking while I'm doing all these other steps over here. So you can do this right in the crock pot if you want. I always like to do it on a plate just because even though we buy boneless, skinless chicken breasts, oftentimes you find a little bit of fat or maybe a little bit of skin and you can just pluck it right off rather than doing it in the crock pot. So I'm gonna go ahead and shred all this and then show you the next step. Okay, so you can see that all my chicken is shredded. There may be a few chunks in here, but I'll catch those as I put it back into the crock pot here. So I just slide all my chicken right back on in there. I try to get all the onions and the seasoning. This is why a lot of folks like to just shred it with the two forks right in the crock pot. Um, that way none of your seasonings or onions are sticking to the plate and getting lost. And then I just make sure I don't have any um, big chunks. And once your chicken looks really good and shredded up in there, you're going to add your heavy cream. And again, I think you could substitute this with evaporated milk if you wanted something less fattening um, but it won't be as creamy and rich and it may not have that alfredo authentic taste and um, we don't eat this very often because of what it is but it's so delicious so you just mix all that heavy cream in with your chicken and then you add the half a cup of parmesan cheese and just get it all mixed in once you have this mixed in, the next step is going to be the, um, adding the noodles to the crock pot. So leave your crock pot on low all the way through all these steps I'm showing you. Leave the crock pot on. I'll be back to show you um, adding the noodles in the last final step before you put the lid on and let it cook for another 20 minutes. So you want to leave it on. Um, 
and not turn it off. It just helps it to get thicker and creamier as well while you're waiting on your noodles. And since you're going to cook it for another 20 minutes anyway, just leave it on. So I will be back when my noodles are done. I'll go ahead and cook them according to the box directions in the boiling water and then I'll drain off the hot water and show you what I do. So hey guys, I'm back. My noodles are done and I've already drained them in my colander. And I'm just gonna dump them into the crock pot with everything else. And I use one of these spoons that are meant for noodles. I think it makes it a little bit easier. And you can see that um, there's a lot of liquid right now, still, which is why you're going to cook it a little bit longer, just so everything gets real thick and creamy for you. So you're just gonna get it stiff for a little bit. And um, try not to make a mess, I always do. Clump of noodles there. I uh, never claim to be a perfectionist in the kitchen. In fact, I'm probably the farthest thing from it, but I make really delicious tasting food, so who cares what it looks like or how I get there, right? So once you get everything mixed in really good, you're still going to have a lot of liquid, like I said, and that's okay, that's normal. It will thicken up on cooking and then thicken again up on standing. Um, you're going to take that fourth a cup of Parmesan cheese you had set aside, and you're just going to sprinkle it right on the top, and you're going to sprinkle paprika on top. And I think this is more for looks and making it pretty than actual flavor, these last two steps, the parsley and paprika, but I do it. I do it. So this will cook for 20 more minutes, and in the meantime, you can make garlic bread or a nice tossed salad to go on the side with it, whatever your family likes. I typically serve this with salad and garlic bread and pepper and chili peppers on the side. But I will be back in 20 minutes to show you guys how um, it looks when it's in a bowl. Hey guys, so it's been 20 minutes and I have dished out the Cajun chicken fettuccine alfredo. I sprinkle a little bit more Parmesan, paprika, and parsley on top. This time it was absolutely for looks so that it looks pretty. And I add a little pepperoncini pepper on the side, and this is my homemade garlic bread that we'll serve with it. And we'll be getting our iced teas and our salad out of the fridge and having a really delicious meal. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I would love to hear it if you guys try this. This is absolutely one of our favorite recipes. We just don't eat it very often because it's so fattening and probably not healthy. Do me a favor and smash that like button down below if you haven't already and you would like to. Please subscribe to our channel and help us feed a hungry hippo. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We're at Flippin' Hippos. Until next time, you guys have a good night.